Next, Richard drives a pair of wheeled accessories. I discover if the Australians are better at cars than they are at rugby. And James tries to finish the job of killing our Toyota. And welcome. Now, we get a lot of letters of complaint on Top Gear from people with sensible shoes that we only do fast, expensive cars. So, Mr Hush Puppy and Mr Brogue, look at this. It's the new Citroen C2. It's a replacement for the little Saxo, and coming up now is my road test of it. It's a little bit shorter than the old Saxo, which makes it easier to deal with in supermarket car parks. And with a split-folding rear tailgate and a practical boot, it's an ideal tool for the weekly shop. Of course, ever since the 2CV, Citroen has been the badge of choice for those of a guardian disposition. So, if you're the sort of person who dines on tofu and plays whale song at dinner parties, you'll love the diesel version, which does 78 miles to the gallon. Old people are going to like the way it's so easy to drive, and the prices too, which start at just £7,500. And this being Citroen already, there's a £500 cashback offer. It's at the track where things start to go wrong. If you buy the hot version, the 1.6 VTR that I have here, you have to have a flappy paddle gearbox. Which is horrid. Uh, into fourth. And it's not that electric to drive. There's none of the joie de vivre you used to get from old hot citrons. It's a bit stodgy. It's not that fast either for a car with sporting pretensions. 121 miles an hour is not really enough. So, it's a wonderful car then for everyone except the thrusting young man who wants to get a move on. No, actually, it's thrusting young men who are going to like this car most of all. Look at the details. The gear lever that seems to have come from a sex shop. The translucent trim. The 12 million gigawatt stereo. And the bump, which is full of words like wicked and cool. <laughs> 